Hi everybody, this is Liam Martin from Running Remote and in today's video, we are going to be talking about something that I've wanted to talk about for quite a few months. Uh, Igor, let me actually talk about this. We are gonna be talking about the actual nuts and bolts of the Running Remote Conference. Did we make money? Did we not make money? What are all of our costs? In this video, you're going to learn everything that we did to be able to run Running Remote last year and find out whether we made money. Stay tuned. Okay, so conferences actually, they're pretty difficult to make money with. Uh, I wish I had known that before getting into this whole conference thing, but the most successful conference in the industry probably makes, or like the, the industry of conferences, probably makes about 20% margin. So that's realistically, what you can make if you are running a conference. So if you're running a million dollar conference, as an example, maybe you're netting 200,000 off of that as your best case scenario. So in comparison to software, as an example, from Time Doctor and Staff.com, conferences are not anywhere near as profitable as that. However, there are other interesting justifications that you would run a conference like this. Number one, do you actually like doing conferences. I like talking to people that run and scale remote teams. It's super interesting. I want to talk with them a little bit more. I would, I wish someone had built this conference other than me and I could have just attended to be honest with you, but now we're here where we, where we are. So I'm just moving forward with it. Um, and it's a ton of fun. I love doing it every single year. Also, you see other advantages outside of that direct conference. So maybe there's brand impression that you can get co-associated with for our software companies, as an example, Time Doctor, which is part of the technology stack inside of remote work. And then I think the last advantage is like, you know, this is something that long-term could lead into different partnerships, those types of thing. But like at the end of the day, if you want to make money at a conference, I would suggest you get into software because making money at conferences is actually pretty hard. Uh, so I'm gonna give you, you have to watch this video all the way to the end to be able to tell, to be able to know whether or not we made money. I'm even gonna give you a spoiler alert on that one. It's, uh, it's pretty interesting. So let's jump into the tea. Number one, we, I'm gonna actually break down all of our categories of revenue, which is actually quite interesting, the breakdown of those. So number one, we had marketing costs. That was $12,740.90 and or 7.4% of the company's costs. We also had social media spend, which is basically just the same thing as marketing costs. So marketing costs were like, Igor went to a conference, you know, we did some soft or software purchases that we made for marketing purposes, that kind of stuff. That was basically the marketing cost category, 12,700. Social media spend, however, uh, was the amount that we spent on Facebook ads, retargeting, um, setting up those ads, all that kind of stuff. That was $17,782.59 or 10.3% of the pie. Then we had operations. So operations was actually like buying the venue, getting the AV done, that kind of stuff. That was $72,886.16 or 42.2% of our costs. Uh, so that's basically the entire cost right there is actually just like getting the venue, which is super scary when you cut a check for $70,000 as an example and hopefully expect to be able to make that back throughout the year. Print and production and inventory, that was $5,329.92 or 3.1% of our overall costs. HR costs, which were basically just some of the short-term costs that we paid at the end of the year, some of the staff that we had at the event, that kind of thing, that was $23,311.68, AKA 13.6% of our overall costs. Also accommodation, you know, having speakers and putting them in hotels is pretty expensive. That was $22,697.06, AKA 13.2% of our overall costs. You also need to fly these speakers to these locations. So flights were quite expensive, $17,732.93, AKA 10.3% of our overall costs. And total sales, when we added everything up, 
were $181,566.05. So that basically was pretty evenly distributed between sponsors and attendees. One of the interesting things that no one really tells you in the kind of conference world is sponsors are actually a much bigger chunk of your revenue than you would think. So at Running Remote One, basically, last or two years ago, sponsors were about 30% of our revenue, and this year they're about 50% of our revenue, and we expect sponsors to actually be a much bigger chunk of our revenue moving forward. Uh, so basically, as you grow a conference, sponsors become a much bigger part of the pie. Now, other interesting factoid, the cost per ticket sold. So. What do you think the cost per ticket sold was? Well, I can tell you some interesting information right off the bat. The average ticket price for last year was about $460, but the cost per ticket sold was actually $913.91. So basically, every time that we sell a ticket, we lose money. And that was something that includes some of the comp tickets that we did. We actually did a much smaller block of comp tickets than we had done the previous year. The other thing that's quite interesting is people that have a comp ticket very rarely show up actually to the event. So we're not doing that for the next year in Austin. We had basically sold out and we were freaking out last year because we didn't think that we would have enough spots for everybody and we actually started emailing all of the people that we had comped and said hey are you actually coming because we want to just like pull your ticket so we can sell it which was uh, pretty scary so total sales 181k total costs 171,815 dollars and 24 cents which gave us a gross profit margin of $9,750.81, or otherwise 5.37% profit margin for last year's running remote. So best in, cl in class does about 20. We lost money last year. I'll be able to link up to that video above uh, where we talk about the entire PL for last year, but we made profit this year. Uh, generally with conferences, you lose money on the first one, you break even on the second one, and you make money on the third one. So hopefully we can make a bigger profit for next year. Uh, if you wanna help us out with that, sponsorships and or ticket sales are always greatly appreciated. You can basically put that down in the comments or we'll have a link uh, to be able to access the sponsorship uh, sign up form down below. But that's basically it. We made 5.3% profit this year or last year for running remote. Uh, so that's not that much. I could put my time into other things and probably get a much higher ROI. But we really wanna continue doing it. It's something that I find very exciting. It's something that feeds me. I call this my dessert business. Uh, so I do it every Friday to be able to make sure that it's not encroaching on Time Doctor, which is the main business that I work on day in and day out. But if you have any other questions about how Running Remote ran and the details of how a conference works, please ask that down in the comments below. And if you liked this video, and if you've made it this far in this video, uh, why don't you also subscribe? Because it's completely free. Uh, I won't charge you anything for it. And we talk about all of these things all day long. Also, honorable mention, if you actually subscribe to this YouTube channel, like this video, and put a comment down, you'll be randomly in the drawing for a free ticket to Running Remote 2020, which is going to be happening in April in Austin, Texas. So hopefully I see you there. And uh, if not, then watch another one of these videos. See you later.